everybody so today is Wednesday and that means it's time for our next entry in the Disney Canon project today we're looking at the 1963 Disney animated film the sword in the stone and this is number 18 in our Disney Canon project and this was the last film to be released in Walt's life uh, the Jungle Book would be released just a few uh, months after his passing in 1966 really shows in these latter films i think what disney lost with uh, the loss of walt disney and what a leader he was in even just creating stories i know this film has a lot of fans a lot of people have a lot of nostalgic feelings for it and a lot of people just genuinely like it and that's awesome this is the second film when you if you include peter pan that i kind of don't really like that much <laughs> i think there's good things about it uh, and I don't think it's as good as Peter Pan, but I think that it is in general frustrating for me. It's not one that I watched a lot as a kid, so I don't have that nostalgia, that sort of attachment to it. And like I do with Jungle Book or Robin Hood, the first thing that frustrates me the most about Sword in the Stone is that you have Disney's chance to tell the King Arthur legend with all the lore and Lancelot and Guinevere and just an amazing lore that's out there with King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and all of the different stories that they could have told. And the fact that they ended up telling this story kind of bums me out. And this is, I think, a great example of what happened because Sleeping Beauty failed. If Sleeping Beauty had been a huge success, we would have gotten the King Arthur story that I would have wanted and that I think that the, the source material deserves. But because we didn't, and because films like 101 Dalmatians and Lady and the Tramp are successful, then they go for more of this comedic route and they go for the less artistically ambitious route. And it's, it's just too bad, I think. It's too bad. Well, let's talk about the film that we did get instead of the one I wish that we had gotten. The movie is based on a novel that was published, Sword in the Stone, in 1938. And it is about supposedly the man who would be king. It's about the childhood of King Arthur and how he got his calling to become the the king of england well in this version there is this sword in the stone and whoever pulls the sword out of the stone it's excalibur whoever pulls it out is the king and his we in this version of the story we have young arthur who is called wart he is training to become a squire and he's perfectly happy to be a squire he he would like to become a squire. And so this movie, basically, you have to go with the fact that becoming book educated and becoming uh, a, a smart in that sense is inherently better than him becoming a squire. That's pounded into the ground. Education is great. And not to say education isn't great, but they do a lot of talking about how education is great in this movie and not really showing how the education is useful. Wizard Merlin ends up meeting Arthur Wart and he decides to take on he feels something for this boy and he decides to become Arthur's tutor and to train him in all that is needed to to become the be the one worthy to pull the sword from the stone. The rest of the movie is basically Merlin giving Arthur a series of lessons and there are three main lessons that he gets. And then you also get little sort of interruptions where his sort of foster father in the, at the castle is, is frustrated with him and spending all his time with Merlin. And to be honest, Arthur kind of wants to become a squire. Like he, that's what he wants. It's just weird, this movie, I think. So the three lessons, first one, Merlin turns Arthur into a fish. And this is supposedly supposed to teach Arthur about instinct and how different fish have different kind of instinct. I don't know what that makes you a better king. How does that lesson help you to become worthy to pull the sword from the stone? The movie never makes that clear. In fact, in the end, the person who actually does something courageous and something kind of kingly in the that section is actually Archimedes, who's the owl who saves Arthur from uh, this eel kind of fish, and uh, and then Arthur once he's back to being a, a human he just walks away and he's like okay this is fun 
Like, there's not some profound lesson that he's learned, that the movie is showing us that he has learned. And so then we get to the next lesson, and in this lesson, he gets turned into a squirrel. And there's this squirrel that falls in love with Arthur Squirrel. Squirrels only mate once in their life, they have a life partner, and so there's nothing Arthur can Arthur Squirrel can do, uh, but he ends up turning back into a human and he breaks the little squirrel's heart. She ends up crying. It's very sad. And I don't know what that lesson has to do with being a king either. And the movie doesn't satisfactorily explain what that lesson is. I mean, I guess you break hearts or you have to love your people or something like that. That could be a good lesson, but it's not effectively explained. And and he doesn't seem to learn any of that either. He's sort of annoyed by her. He doesn't really like her and he goes away. He hasn't really learned anything. And so it's it's another example. So the squirrel in that case has learned some his Archimedes learns in lesson one. The squirrel, the girl squirrel learns uh, to like accept heartbreak, I guess, in lesson two. Then we get to lesson three. And this is where it's not really even a lesson. It's uh, Arthur getting turned into a bird. He flies into Madame Mim's house. This is the villain of the movie, but we literally are meeting her in the last act of the film. And th this again is another example of Arthur just as a spectator in this lesson. So it ends up being this wizard's duel between Merlin and Madame Mim because they both think they're the greatest wizards in all the world. Well, again, what is Arthur learning from this? It's a really fun scene. I The wizard's duel is wonderfully animated. It's so much fun, but it's not helping serve the story because it doesn't have anything to do with Arthur pulling the sword from the stone. So that's where I have a big problem with it. And Again, is this is Merlin. Merlin learns more in the course of this movie. He's more worthy to pull the sword from the stone by the end of the film. And so it, it's just frustrating to me. Really, there's, there's two major things I think this movie has going for it that don't make me completely dump on it. Uh, the songs, Sherman Brothers songs are great as always, that they always have great songs. I love the actual intro uh, about the sword and the stone. And it's so frustrating to me because I wish that we had gotten it, a sort of an epic s story like we were promised in that intro. But we we really don't. It's just kind of a silly little movie. And then we get Higgadus Figadus, which is the dishes washing and the packing the suitcase song. And then we have a most befuddling thing, which is the song that is sung about the squirrel and love and everything. It's a cute little song. There's Mad Madam Mim. And it's actually, I think, kind of a little bit of an underrated villain song. It's it's pretty fun uh, by Madam Mim, but it doesn't really matter because you're just meeting this character in the last third of the movie. And so the other I guess the other thing I do like, like I said, is the wizard's duel is really well animated and it's exciting and it's fun uh, to see them. They're constantly changing sizes and shapes and characters and uh, it's a very, very engaging sequence. Well, the that's not enough to me to recommend the film. It really isn't. I, I don't think the vocal performances are very good in the movie. The, the actor that they got to play Arthur, he his voice changed while they were filming because it took a while to make the movie and it, you can tell. The rest are, are fine. There's nothing special about the voice cast here. And I think that it actually is kind of ugly. I don't particularly care for it at least. It's the sketch era and it's very blue and gray and it, there's just no sort of bright colors. There's nothing to sort of interest me personally artistically about it. So it's pretty much just the wizard's duel and the songs. That is the saving grace of this movie. Uh, I think that otherwise it's a mess and it's a huge opportunity missed in for Disney. Ah, oh, they could have told an awesome King Arthur with Guinevere and Lancelot and Oh, it just frustrates me so much. And so I don't really like this movie that much, uh, but for those few parts that I think are good, I will give Sword in the Stone a C. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think. Is it one that you grew up with that you really like? Uh, put in the comment section and uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later. Bye.